Hey, I'm Jay, and I've got something to say about miniatures painting. So, uh, you know, we talk a lot about collecting the miniatures. Maybe some of you are into 3D printing, uh, but maybe some of you aren't into painting as much uh, because maybe you're not used to painting armies uh, for Warhammer or whatever. So I'm going to try to make a few videos. I'm not very good. Um, so I'm going to try to make a few videos of, like, bare bones basics, which is this one, um, and then maybe some... Uh, a little bit on you know color theory and mood lighting and OSL and, and you know that kind of stuff so I'll maybe uh, make half a you know three or half a dozen videos on painting techniques um, I apologize that I didn't have my camera very well centered um, so I bought a long time ago I bought a ring light selfie cam but the cam the phone mount camera mount wasn't the way it was described so it's supposed to mount in the middle of the light um, it's supposed to mount in the middle of the light and adjustable, pointing straight at what you're looking at. But mine came with a, a pole mount, so my camera's got to be mounted below the light. And it's hard to get it at a good angle for straight up and down. It's a lot better for um, like this straight forward and back. So um, we are going to talk about <clears throat> very basics of mini painting. So if you've never painted a mini before, what you're going to do is you're going to color inside the lines. You're going to block out your colors so all of the skin is one solid color with forget shading forget shadows you can see i've got shadows here from my glasses i've got shadows here from um my nose in the light i've got a little highlight running right here a big highlight right here we're not going to worry about that to start okay so this is the quickest dirtiest way if you're just starting out if you don't know where to start this is the way to do that we're going to block out our colors in a middle tone we're going to cheat with a dark wash. Um, so what happens with a wash or with Games Workshop Citadel contrast paints or with Army Painter speed paints um, is they are translucent, thinner paints that run into the recesses. So the high spots still show your base color and the low spots get more saturated. Um, I'm going to use a dark brown um, so that saturation is going to be very dark like a shadow. Okay, you can use colors, um, uh, you can use contrasting colors to uh, do the same effect, but basically what we want to do is we want to make our model look more three-dimensional um, because it's very small. So we need to over-exaggerate the shadows and the highlights, so we need to push the contrast really high. Think of it like stage makeup, right? If you've ever seen a live play um, and then met the cast afterwards up close, their makeup is over the top and horrendous right um, because you need to see it from 300 feet away you need to, you need to be able to see that somebody has rosy cheeks and you can't get up six inches from them so same thing with the minis we over exaggerate the light because we want to emulate the same amount of light and the same amount of shadow that a six foot tall figure is casting but instead of having an inch of overhang here to cast a shadow you have a millimeter you're not going to get a shadow off of a millimeter. The ambient light's going to fill that in. So you need to fake the shadow. You need to um, achieve that with your paint colors. So we're going to cheat by using a wash. Um, you can look up how to make your own wash. You can buy washes. Uh, um, Army Paint or Strong Tone, Citadel, Nuln Oil, or Agrax Earthshade. Um, I'm sure there's 8,000 others. Um, but I like to have a dark brown wash um, and a skin tone wash uh, all the time. So here's me painting a whole bunch of skeletons because I like my bone recipe and I think it's really easy. Thanks. So I've got these three Arachno boys. Um, I'm going to base coat them up real quick. So we're going to do, like I said, we're going to do base coat. Um, dark wash highlight and be done so I'm gonna base coat them up real quick see so we'll do a dark ochre yellow on all the bone on all of these skeletons and then we'll do a dark brown wash to get in all the crevices and then we'll dry brush with a light white okay so I've got my colors blocked out you can see I've got an ochre yellow underneath all the bone uh, I've got a dark metallic um, 
It's Army Painter Rough Iron plus Night Scales plus some Platinum Silver, which is a, a Night Scales is a black metallic. Um, Rough Iron's like reddish, but this came out kind of purple. Um, I already have uh, these guys that I kind of want to match, which is why I have the blue. Um, but I want to go a little higher contrast. Like, you know, the, this is kind of one of the early things I did with Artist Acrylic um, instead of Mini Paints. So I want to kind of do similar to this, but, um, you know, kind of use what I've learned and push a little harder. Okay, so for, uh, we got this, um, uh wash on here come on focus we got this wash on here as you can see everything's just a little dingier darker um, so we're gonna put a little bit of silver and gold mixed together uh, just to give it a little so it's not quite so bright white silver um, on all the metal and silver already doesn't have really good coverage so um, you know as long as we put it on a little light it will be all good and then that'll look like some pretty aged metal there. Just on all the metal bits, just real light. So you can still see some of that dark coming through. Right on the axe there, on whatever these are. A little bit on the bottom. Hopefully that's in, Hopefully that's in shot. All right, I'll get the back side later, but I just wanted to show you for a fact. So, we're just a little heavier than dry brushing on that. Right. Again, because the metal goes on pretty uh, with pretty poor coverage to begin with. Um, and that's all the metal on him. All right. And then... We'll grab an actual dry brush with some white. Um, I mixed a little bit of linen because pure white gets really chalky. Uh, I mixed a little bit of linen white and we'll just real light dry brush all the bones. Just real light. And if we get a little bit elsewhere, that's okay, because we'll touch it up. But we're just going to try to hit all the bones, just kind of almost as light as we can. Right, so now you have the really dark recesses. You can see, like, right in between that that bone right there is really dark. On the outline of these bones are really dark. But then we have a little bit of the bleach. We have the yellow plaque showing through, but then we have a little bit of the bleached, bleached white. Showing through here, and it's see how quick that is. Right, like you're waiting for the paint to dry more than you're actually painting. Um, this guy needs a little more light highlight to bring out the cloak on the back and some on his hair. Um, and he's basically done. Got to get a little... Right there. Whoops. Oh, that's okay. We'll put a little... We've got really black, black hair, so that's fine with a little white highlight there. And I might actually just hit the tips of this cloak so that when I go back with the blue, it's a little easier. Actually, I might, I might leave it like that because I got the black in the creases from the wash. Um, I got the white on the peaks. I might leave it like that. Um, I think I'm going to give him a red mohawk. Um, so then we'll just get a little more. Same thing here. He's a little less bone showing.
and I'm going to come back and probably brown up uh, the fabric bits. And the handle here on his axe. So you can see how messed up this brush is. Just trying to hit all the yellow spots just a little bit. Like that. And again, so I'm going to touch up his blue, touch up some of the metal. Um, and we'll show you what the finished product looks like. Okay, so again, just a real quick dry brush on the cloth parts. And man, is that not in focus? That's all it takes. So here's that cloak that I dry brushed in white. Now with the light blue. Ah, I lost where I am. There we go. So, all done. This guy. Okay, so, this guy's basically all done. I highlighted this uh, handle with a light brown. I highlighted these wraps with a like a yellowish, just to make them stand out from the bone a little bit. Um, you know, maybe you could do them red like flesh. But the other thing you can do is I can take some of this rough iron here, and I can kind of weather and rust up the metal on the edges, right? Just like that. Um, so you can kind of give them a little more, a little more texture, make them look a little more aged. Yep, all done. So that's how you can easily base coat, dark wash, dry brush, or highlight. Um, you can layer highlight if you want. Um, you know, the skeleton was a little easy because I know the recipe for bone because um, I've done enough bone that I, I kind of like the dark brown or black followed by a yellow ochre followed by an off-white. Um, but it's the same, right? You can do a, a maroon um, followed by a bright red or a burgundy red followed by a light red um, followed by some of that light red with a little white added into it or a little orange or yellow added into it for a highlight um, or a purple or red and an orange um, but it's all the same process so that's the quick quick and dirty and like I said you can come back and hit hit like I went back and hit these cloths to redo them I'll come back and weather some stuff with this rusty color You know, uh, just get them dirtied up a little bit.